Hello everyone, welcome to the Red Stick. Hope you all have a good week and let's get started. So the interesting fact of the day is that no NBA team this season has won a game um, when scoring um, 84 points, um, period, whether it's, you know, regular season or postseason. No team has won when scoring 84 points until Saturday night when the Sun did against the Clippers. Um, so that's why I want to start my um, conversation into the day. You remember how I said that after the Clippers won game three and the Hawks upset the Bucks in game one, it's like, let's not overreact here. Everything's fine. The Bucks are the better team. They're going to win the series. Suns are the better team without, you know, Clippers having Kawhi Leonard. You know, even the Clippers win game four, like they're going to control the series. They're, they're going to be just fine. And look what happened. The Suns beat Clippers. And they're going to win the series most likely. And the Bucks are now have won two games in a row against the Hawks here looking, you know, Dominant looking to win that series, just as I predicted. So it pays not to overreact. And when you don't overreact and you make rational decisions, then that's where you're going to be right most of the time. So uh, as for the tonight against the Clippers and Suns, I'm, pre- I'm, I'm not 100% sure the Suns are going to win. My guessing is I think they're going to win tonight and close it out. If they do lose... I do feel like they will lose game six because they just are not playing well at Staples Center at all. Clippers never going to score that low points ever again. So if the Clippers win tonight, they will win game six. So then it will come down to game seven, which I think the Suns will win because I don't see the Suns um, losing two games at home. So like I said, Suns will win either way. It's just going to be either tonight in five or um, the other night in seven. So I'm playing six like I originally predicted, but that's fine. Um you know, as far as the Bucks and Hawks go, um, I would say it all depends on Trey Young's health because right now his ankle's kind of banged up and all that. If he's if he's fine, then I think the Hawks can hopefully win one more game. You know, before the end of the Bucks, you know, close out the series. But if not, the Bucks might win the rest of the games this series. And that's how well they're playing. Milton's going off, and as you see the Hawks won Game One with Trey Young just going berserk, and you know, Milton who's been going off the past two games, um, stunk in that first game. Um, and then Giannis kind of had a quiet game, you know, game one as well, and he's been going on for the past two games. So it makes, so I told you, it makes a difference there. Like, more often than not, you know, Giannis and Milton combination will be better than Trey Young by himself, and that's what we're seeing right now. So with the NBA offseason approaching soon, there will be a bunch of trades, especially with this free agency class being weak, um, at least top-heavy week-wise. Um, there's a lot of good role players in this free agency class, but as far as top – um, players go, there's not a lot. I could wait till the finals is over to go over this, but as you know, you, know, you saw with Kim Walker the other day, you know, some teams may not want to wait to trade a player. So bef- before any more trades come out, I want to go over my trade predictions or scenarios um, for some players that I feel like will get traded. To start off, though, I want to go over some players that, you know, there's been conversations maybe, but I don't think will be traded. One, Luka Doncic, he's not going to get traded. That's a fact. He's not going to get traded. Like, if he does get traded, it won't be at the earliest until after next season. Because, you know, because Jason, I feel like Jason could be good fit for him. Luca likes to beat Dallas. He's going to sign the extension, all that. Um, I know there's been a bit of recent turmoil with Dallas, but no, it's, Luca's not going to get traded. Um, Zion Williamson. I don't think he's going to be traded either. I think this will be the season to see, okay, will the, this new coach work with Zion? Does new coach help the team in general become better? Um, is Zion surrounded by good enough players to try to, you know, make the playoffs finally? Uh, or is New Orleans going to make a move to try to upgrade the roster? And then if they don't do those things, then maybe after next season, it's like, okay, I've already had enough. Um, but if they can make those moves and the Pelicans could become more relevant, then they, Zion and his family, you know, might be able to put up, you know, with the um, bad um, front office people and stuff like that. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Um, Kyrie Irving. Some people say you need to trade for a different star. You know, because Kyrie's unreliable. No, not only because of how, because he's always not committed and stuff like that. But Kyrie Irving won't get traded. The reason why KD went to Brooklyn is because he wanted to go with his boy Kyrie. They're not going to split them up. Like, I feel like if you split Kyrie Irving and KD up, then KD might either want to trade or once his contract's over, he's going to automatically leave, you know, because you do that. He, and, you know, KD's very sensitive. So, like, you don't want to trade his boy. So, I don't see that happening. Paul George. Originally, I thought this could happen, but because the Clippers have gotten to where they're at right now, and 
the fact that um, if they had Kawhi, I mean, they'd most likely be winning the championship this year. Um, I feel like the Clippers are going to trade Paul George's, but they're going to keep him. Um, now, actually, well, actually, if Kawhi Leonard is free agency, then all bets are off. Um, but I mean, if he stays, um, I think Paul George will stay as well uh, because they saw, like, okay, against the game five, game six against Utah, and then, you know, they're like, okay, yeah, we can – we can win with him. Yeah, he's like he's not, you know, paying to make a bubble pee anymore type of thing. Now, is he perfect in the playoffs? No, but like he's definitely, you know, showed himself to be better than he was in the bubble. Um, and then Damian Lillard. Now, I know there's recent reports about him um, wanting, uh, potentially re- requesting a trade and all that. But um, he wanted, I mean, he wanted kids as coach, but then his second option for head coach was Billups, which they just hired. So, so he got the head coach he wanted. And then as far as, you know, roster goes, if Portland can make a move, like let's say they get a bunch of 3D guys for agency and make their defense better, then that might be enough to get Damon Lillard to stick around. Um, now, if you don't do anything to the roster, then yeah, that might make a map. If you upgrade it and try to do your best to add some players to make a championship run, and, and he'll give it another year. He'll, he'll, he would want to stay because, you know, he's a loyal guy. He really wants to stay if he can. Um, so I don't think he's going to be traded. Okay, so now for the players I think will be traded. Um, and instead of doing a top five list for each player, it's like I usually like to do a top five list, I'm doing a top three list. So let's get started. So for um, my first player I'm going to go over, it'll be Ben Simmons. Uh, we know he's going to get traded. Um, the question is where my first option, like I mentioned the other day, was Sacramento. Um, 76ers get a scoring guard in De'Aaron Fox in return, because I feel like you have to do a swap there. You know, Sacramento gets Ben Simmons, you know, he'll upgrade Sacramento's defense. There's a bunch of shooters for Ben Simmons to pass it to. Um, both um, centers for Sacramento are free agents. There's not like someone to clog the paint. He knows he can go attack the paint. Um, he's going to be brand recognition, you know, for Sacramento. It'll be a box office type of thing for that franchise, which they need. And then for him, there's not as much expectations of pressure on him. It's just, you know, if he gets the playoffs, hey, that's good enough right there. So uh, I feel like that's a good fit for him. Um, the second option is Golden State. You've been hearing about this one a lot. Um, him being paired up with you know Stephen Clay could be a scary combination. Um, Steve Kerr can figure out how to use him, in my opinion. Now I feel like you would have to trade Draymond Green in this case, um, especially since they're similar guys, you know. Um, and maybe the 14th overall pick that you have in the lottery, but um, but if, if you're the Warriors, that's worth it, you know. Um, also, you know Simmons being in California, like Sacramento was, you know I think Simmons loves California, so him being in that environment. is um, he would like that, you know. Um, so, again, um, the Warriors still won't have much of a bench here, but that's good enough. Um, starting five. And then third, I'm going to go with Boston and stay on the East Coast here. Think about this. Boston doesn't have a point guard or a point forward, whatever you want to call Ben Simmons. They just traded Kemba, and I don't see any other guards on this roster right now. Currently, he's going to be a true point guard. I mean, Mark Smart's a shooting guard, in my opinion. So, so think about that. So you can trade Marcus Smart, and I know he's a soul and dog, you know, of the team. Um, but you have to trade him, and then maybe a bench player, and then Van, and then maybe a first round pick you guys here. But then you have Simmons, Tatum, Brown, Foyner if they can resign him, and then Horford. While again the bench is not the best, like that's a good starting five right there. I'll take that if I'm Boston. Um. Now, the next one's Colin Sexton. There were reports came out there in the weekend that Cavs are looking to explore trade options for him, which I feel like is smart because they're going to get a guard in the draft. Um, so my first option for Colin Sexton is the New York Knicks. If you're the Knicks, I mean, Julius Randle has been the one guy to come, you know, knocking on your door recently. Luckily, he turned to an all-star type of player, which he wasn't when he came there. But we know the Knicks need scoring. So, And since you're hardly going to get anyone to willingly come there, you need to trade for Colin Sexton here. I feel like, you know... You're not going to get fourth seed in the Eastern Conference again. You might not even make the playoffs again next year because a lot of teams are going to improve. So you need to make some upgrades if you want to uh, make the playoffs again next year. Second is Miami. And this is if they don't get Kawhi Leonard. Um, the, if so, then they can trade in those Tyler Hero, Kendrick Nunn, or picking up for Sexton. I feel like Sexton will be able to, you know, love that Miami culture of working hard and stuff, especially since Cleveland is the opposite culture. He needs a culture change, and I feel like that would be a good one for him. The third is the Los Angeles Lakers. I mean, I know they were talking about Westbrook and Kemba Walker, you know, but it's just like, why don't I get a younger point guard here who can shoot better than Westbrook and doesn't have bad knees like Kemba Walker? I mean, I feel like it's a good option right there. Um, Chris Tapps Porzingis. My first option is Charlotte. I mean, it's no secret that Charlotte doesn't really have a good big man. 
I mean, you got you know, Mikhail Bridges stuff, but he's more like a four than an actual center, you know. They need an actual center, you know. And with LaMelo now running the show, if you had KP to help out offense, that's something. So then you have a big three, LaMelo Ball, Gordon Hayward, and Porzingis. Now there's health problems between all three of them, but if they can all stay healthy, then that's a formidable big three right there. And instead of talking play-in scenario, then you can talk playoff scenario now. Um, and then Charlotte has a bunch of good deal, real role players that Dallas can get in return. Um, the New Orleans Pelicans. If you want Zion to be happy, maybe getting KP um, can help. St- Steven Adams is a nice veteran. Backup center Jackson Hayes is a nice backup center, but neither can shoot the ball like KP can. So KP commands that nice um, dimension to Pelicans' offense and makes them more dangerous. Um, so, but if you know Porzingis can stay healthy, which is always the key, then I feel like that could be a workout. Now the Pelicans could trade, you know, Eric Bledsoe maybe a pick since Dallas um, does not have a first rounder. The bright side is about when you're is that when you get KP, it's like. You don't have to get up the farm to get him because that contract's so horrible. So you're lucky if you're a team getting him, in my opinion. Yeah, you have to eat a bad contract, but you don't have to give a lot because of that. Third option, San Antonio. Um, now the Spurs, as we know, lost Aldridge and are going to lose um, DeMar Rose most likely. And you can't keep on banking on draft picks turning into potential stars like you did with Tim Duncan and all that. So you need a scoring big man. KB can help provide that for you. Um, as of right now, if you lose DeRozan, you're not even making the playing game. So if you're Porzingis, I can help you at least buy time until you're rebel again, or a later opportunity comes along. Now, the Brooklyn Nets would be a good fit for KP as well, but the problem is they can't afford him, so that's why they're not in my top three. Next is Bradley Beal. Number one option is obviously the Lakers. LeBron loves Bradley Beal. They can get a big three going. They're automatically the favorites. Um, Yes, you're going to have to – you don't have much pieces to give up anyways, but if you can make it happen, go get it. The second option is Dallas. Okay, keeping Luca needs a true number two. This is the guy to trade for. Now, again, defensively won't help that much, but at least you take the score and burn off Luca. You get better role, and then if you can get better role players, um, and you got, I actually got better role players to offer than the Lakers do. Um, so if I'm Dallas to try to make it happen here, swap Porzingis for Beal, and maybe another player, you know, like um, Jalen Brunson or something. Um, if the Mavs want to be true talent contenders next season, this is how you do it. The third option is Milwaukee, and I know Milton's good and all that. But if you're the Bucks and you fall short in the finals this year, which will most likely happen because I feel like the Suns are going to win it, you're not going to get this break again with all these injuries giving you a free pass to the finals, basically. And Milton can only do so much. I feel like Bradley, you need to trade him and maybe like um, Pat Connington or something for a Bradley Beal so we go more reliable score and closer in the playoffs because Milton is just too consistent. Uh, next is Tyler Hero. So I feel like the Lakers could be one option for him. Um, Hero needs, you know, like a grown-up, you know, helping him change his ways and all that. LeBron is definitely that grown-up that could help him. Um, and then also the Lakers need better role players. And if Hero could tap into his bubble um, style, the way he played bubble, that could be a good role player for the Lakers. Two is the New York Knicks. Now, Hero's not a good defender. And, you know, Tom Thibodeau wants good defenders on the team. But Knicks, like the Lakers, they just need scoring. So, I mean... Hero is probably going to be one of the only options, the best option you can do, so go for it. And then the third option here is Toronto. I feel like shipping Hero off to Canada might get, you know, refocused and get his mind right recommitted um, since he doesn't have all those distractions. Um, and then plus, I feel like Nick Nurse, you know, we can maybe get something out of him. And, and Toronto gives more role players, um, so I feel like he can uh, be a fit there. Um, so that's it for today. Um, please subscribe to my podcast. Um, um, Share this podcast there when you can. If you have any comments, leave them. Um, Thank you very much. You know, have a wonderful day. Thank you very much.